Hello, I'm excited to introduce Cropbox at the Julia.com. Cropbox is a Julia package designed for supporting crop model development. My name is Gyeongdam and I'm currently a postdoc at the University of Washington in Seattle. The ideal crop model came from agronomy, where it takes environmental data as input and simulates the growth of crop plants as output. It has a quite long history of development for more than four decades and is getting more attention recently as an important tool for assessing the impact of climate change on agriculture. In one of its simplest forms, it may simulate the accumulation of total biomass from a seed to the mature plant ready for harvest. A more realistic model may simulate more complex patterns of biomass allocation between different parts of the plant. Not just biomass, but other aspects of plant growth can be also simulated. This output shows the number of leaves and their life cycle. Note that crop model is practically a software for running simulations. The development of crop model can get quite complex. From an engineering perspective, building a crop model is like building other software and it can face many technical issues. That's why we need a framework to cover common features and patterns. And that's why I came up with Cropbox, an open source modeling framework to build crop models. Cropbox streamlines a modeling workflow from writing a model, running simulations, and the output visualization, as well as evaluation of the model. Let's first take a look at how the model is written. A model is written in a domain specific language with a high level abstraction. Then the framework takes care of generating actual Zulia code. The written model looks like this, relying on Julia macros. Basically, variables are declared one by one with some metadata. Then, lots of useful information is being extracted, including a correct order of variable updates. Cropbox is built on other great Julia packages, and here we rely on light graphs to analyze a dependency graph. Finally, Julia code is generated under the hood, including a struct code system to hold variables and lots of internal functions around this system. Cropbox heavily relies on macro tools for this. Inside system macro, this variable roughly looks like this. It's given a name and a pattern representing a particular behavior of that variable. And here is a more complete picture. Again, the most important thing here is that each variable is given a certain pattern. A pattern is like a generalization of variable behaviors. There are currently 19 patterns implemented. We already saw pre-jure pattern making a content or variable constant. It is often used for model parameters. Accumulate is essentially doing order integration. We saw this with the biomass accumulation. There are many other patterns. Some are more common, some are more advanced and specialized. For example, a leaf level gas change model is composed of two models, one for biochemical photosynthesis and the other for stomatal conductance, coupled through a CO2 concentration inside the leaf, which is often determined by numerical optimization. While many existing models have to explicitly write down an optimization loop in the model code, here we can instead use bisect variable to let the framework deal with technical details. It also automatically takes care of nested loops in the case of making another layer of coupling to solve an energy balance equation to adjust the lift temperature. While the primary focus of Cropbox framework lies on conventional crop models assuming a rather static structure of the plant, it doesn't prevent an extension to a new modeling approach like the dynamic generation of plant structure in details. This example shows two slightly different root architectures rendered in 3D space, where each tiny root segment is generated by produce variables. Variables may be tagged with extra information like measurement units. 
Those units are not just cosmetic, but actively participate in conversion and validation. And this would not have been possible without Unifold package. Documentation is also supported. Similarly to standard Julia syntax, doc strings can be added to the system itself or each variable inside the system. Then we can access them in help mode or using built-in functions. Once the model is ready, we can run simulations. Parameter values can be directly written inside the model or preferably stored in a separate configuration for better management. Configuration objects are created by config macro and they support simple operations like overriding or merging multiple layers of configurations, which is handy for organizing a complex scenario-driven simulations. Simulations are simply run by calling simulate function. The result is stored in a data frame. Once you get the result, we can move on to the data visualization. In Cropbox, visualize function has a familiar interface like other functions. And it supports a few common types of plot for quick testing during the model development. We currently use GetFly for plotting in the notebook environment and Unicode plots in terminal. In the Jupyter Notebook, we can also use Manipulate to create an interactive plot. This feature is extremely useful by teaching a graduate level plant modeling course and crop modeling workshop using Cropbox. Since the results are stored in a data frame, users can easily come up with custom visualizations if needed. Here are some examples we created using GetFly. This is a plot comparing ill predictions of garlic under climate change scenarios. Another figure showing a possible shift of optimal planting dates in the future. Cropbox also provides other features like model parameter calibration and evaluation. Once an observation data set is given, calibrate function returns a fitted set of parameters in a configuration object. Internally, it relies on a global optimization method from Blackbox opt-in package. And that was a brief overview of modeling workflow with Cropbox. Finally, here is the take home message for today. With that, we hope Cropbox opens up a new opportunity in the crop modeling community as well as in the Julia community. Before we close this, I'd like to thank the following sponsors and also my PI, Suhyun Kim at the University of Washington. Please let me know if you have any questions and thanks for listening.